What I presented today on behalf of uh, my lab is uh, uh, the latest progress in our studies uh, in using uh, the CRISPR technology to understand the mechanisms of uh, tumor cell resistance uh, to uh, pharmacological degraders of oncoproteins. Um, a major part of the presentation focused on um, degraders that operate through uh, cerebellum, uh, and these are the so-called degronimids. And uh, we presented data indicating that there is a substantial overlap in the mechanisms of resistance that uh, degraders that operate through cerebellum uh, exhibit compared to, let's say, uh, the results that are relevant to thalidomide uh, derivatives. Um, there's a major role of cerebellum, uh, of course, uh, in this respect. Uh, that has potential uh, clinical implications um, in the sense that patients who have developed resistance to thalidomide derivatives um, and in the future may be considered candidates for uh, clinical trials of these uh, cerebellum-based degraders for other oncoproteins. Um, it will be important to know that uh, um, the, the, whatever is the specific mechanism of resistance to these thalidomide derivatives in those specific patients um, is a mechanism that still allows cerebellum function to operate even to a small extent in order to allow the degradation of the oncoprotein of interest to take place. To take a step back, um, these protein degraders, oncoprotein degraders, they represent a, a new modality, we believe, uh, in cancer therapeutics where the goal is not to simply block the function of particular cancer-driving proteins, but force them to be broken down by the cell itself, the cancer cell itself. Um, and this is happening through molecules that have two warheads, basically. One warhead binds to the oncoprotein of interest, the other warhead binds to an E3 ligase, uh, a molecule that is responsible for uh, the position of ubiquitin tags uh, on target proteins. And by having these two warheads, these molecules bring into close proximity uh, the E3 ligase um, uh, that we were engaging and leveraging and the oncoprotein we want to degrade, creating an event that otherwise wouldn't take place in the cancer cell, uh, but is intending to therapeutically benefit um, the, uh, the, the effort to eliminate cancer cells by degrading as opposed to simply inhibiting those proteins. Uh, there are a lot of theoretical and practical advantages to this approach. Um, one advantage is that the, the degraders against the particular um, uh, cancer-driving protein may achieve suppression of that, the function of that protein within a very short period of time. Um, there are a lot of instances where we know that small molecule inhibitors that just block the function but don't destroy the protein can have limited activity or the activity can return as soon as the drug um, levels fall. So there are a lot of practical um, and conceptual reasons why that modality is particularly useful. And um, some of these topics were raised during our, our presentation while we also discussed the uh, mechanism of resistance and the latest updates we have in those efforts. I think for, for individuals who, um, I mean, first of all, th there are efforts uh, that will be expected to lead into clinical trials soon. Um, and my understanding is that most of the clinical trials that are expected to take place soon will involve the cerebellum um, uh, based degraders. And so I think it will be important at that stage to know that patients who participate in those clinical trials um, do not have a mechanism, mechanism of resistance to imids that will be precluding them from responding to these degraders. So patients who may have lost expression of cerebellum or patients that have many complex uh, lesions uh, on genes that re uh, regulate that pathway may not necessarily be the best candidates for, for that treatment. But we presented data today um, and also similar data were presented by Dr. Orlovsky uh, indicating that if we have degraders that operate through different E3 ligases, this uh, may allow uh, tumor cells that are resistant to one form of degrader to actually be responsive to another. And so what we proposed uh, in our presentation is they need to better understand how to combine and how to sequence the administration of these degraders in order to prolong the control of the disease uh, using them.